What's going on guys? I have another commentary here today and today I wanted to talk about my first Target Field experience and yes this is the third season that Target Field has been in the Minnesota Twins home stadium but I was just getting there for the first time after not watching any baseball for the last two years. I kind of just lost interest and I only followed football for the last couple of years. And so I got back into it this year. I started watching the Twins on TV. And even though they've been a struggling team, one of the worst teams in the league as far as record goes, I've still enjoyed watching them play a lot, and I'll continue to watch them play. But I had never gone to Target Field. I've been wanting to go really bad this year. And for those of you that did not know, I went to Nada's Fan's house on Wednesday, which is the day we went to the game. And we did some stuff for videos at SLS before we went to the Twins against the A's, a day game at Target Field. And I've been to a few Twins games before, back when they played at the Metrodome. I don't think I've ever seen the A's in person, so this is a new team for me to see. And you can see here on this foul ball, I put a little arrow up there, and that's about where we sat. It was section 103. That's where I wanted to sit, first base side, kind of in between the right fielder and Justin Morneau playing first base. I knew it was going to be a great spot to watch a game, but I'd never been to the target field, and so I was really excited to go. And I've been to one outdoor outdoor game before, and that was in Petco Park. The first year that it opened, I went with my uncle many years ago when I was in middle school, so I can't really remember it. We sat home run porch there, and there were excellent seats. And so I knew I wanted to go to this stadium. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's outdoor baseball. It was a day game. It was beautiful out. It was probably mid to high 60s, so it wasn't overly hot. And the gameplay you're seeing here, I recorded the night before the game, so I don't have the lineups exactly correct. I know Domit didn't actually play when we went. I just used the day before his lineups because I didn't want to have to guess. And I had the pitchers in there, Tyson Ross of the A's against Francisco Liriano. And we were a little leery of going to watch Liriano. It's his first start in almost a month after being sent to the bullpen. And not really pitching all that well in the bullpen either. And I didn't really know anything about the Oakland A's or their record or their players, really. I used to watch baseball a lot. I used to follow the sport. I used to watch Sports Center Baseball Tonight every night during the summer. And I would see all the good players that were coming out of nowhere. And I'd be able to catch up on all the teams and how everybody was doing. But this year, I don't really watch Sports Center Baseball Tonight or anything. I just follow the Twins and, of course, all the football stuff that I do. So I didn't really know much about this team. I just knew I wanted to go. And we ended up buying tickets off of StubHub, I think around like 11 o'clock at night, the night before, as we were just looking at different seats. We were thinking about Legends Club, looking at the home run terrace out in outfield, and uh, this first base side ones, that, I, that was the first seats I was looking at. And the tickets right now are pretty cheap to go watch Twins, because they are playing pretty poorly. And this was a day game as well, but there was actually a really good show out for the game there. They said it was like 30, 32,000, and I'm not sure if that number was beefed up a little bit, but Target Field actually looked pretty full. And we initially were going to get there like a half hour or 40 minutes early because he was going to show me all around the ballpark because I had never seen this place, and I really wanted to go check out all the different sites to see at Target Field and to scout out some future seats I may go to. I've done that before when I've gone to Target Center and I've just walked around to look at different parts of the stadium because I go there to watch WWE. So we didn't have enough time to get there and do that because we were playing a game of MLB 12 the show before we went because we wanted to get that dual commentary done and get a video for you guys which I uploaded yesterday. You can go check that out on both of our channels. That was Nationals against the Marlins and that game just took a little too long, about 50 minutes. We were just going to try to make that a quick game, but we ended up getting to Target Field just before the first pitch um, after leaving his house and getting through traffic into the parking garage. We didn't really have enough time to go walk around, and so we got to the plaza after crossing the street, and there really just wasn't enough time to go do anything, so we went in line and got some food, and by the time I had my hot dog and I was ready to go, I saw Francisco Liriano give up a double. And I'm like, oh boy, here we are already. And I was wondering how quick of a game this would be. It's a day game. I think I've mainly just gone to night games. I love going to those type of games. But they've always been in a dome, so whatever. And I was thinking that Francisco Liriano was going to be the guy that was going to set the pace of this game. Because the Twins starting pitching has been so bad all year. Giving up a lot of runs, especially in those first two innings. And then the team is just struggling with a four, five, six run deficit. And in the past when I've gone to Twins games, I'm pretty sure they've lost a lot more than they've won. So I went quickly in line and got a hot dog and a bottle of water. And the standing room seats in the concourse, well, that concourse is so wide open. There's so much room to walk around and just stand. The standing room seats would have been awesome. 
and we went down into section 103 to go take our seats and just we were starting in the back of the 40th row I'm like these seats right here would be perfect and we had the 11th row and so we walked down the stairs to go get to our seats and there were so many people in the way we have to cross past everybody and we saw down about a few rows row 9 I think it was we just decided to go down there and take up a whole half row to ourselves until someone had to go get their seats if they had those seats, but there was so much room there, we were planning out if someone came where we were going to move to next. So we sat in row 9, we pretty much had half of the row to ourselves, and the view was phenomenal. I mean, I'm sure there's not very many bad seats to sit in in Target Field, there are many stadiums. Like, I've been 26 row on the upper deck of the Metrodome, I had a time of my life watching the Vikings against the Bills. I have never been to a stadium and not liked my seat. I've been to Target Center, Target Field, uh, the Metrodome, and Petco Park. Those are the only stadiums. I want to get around to a lot more, but I've always enjoyed every time I've gone to any one of those stadiums for wrestling, for the Harlem Globetrotters, the Vikings, the Twins. And so I'm, I'm usually not too concerned about how good my seats are going to be. But these seats were just amazing, and I would love to go again and sit in these same seats. As I usually try to sit somewhere in foul territory, I've sat in uh, about left field a couple of times for at a couple of different stadiums, and I've liked it, but I prefer sitting in foul territory and having a nice broad view of the stadium, being able to see the jumbotrons and everything. That's the way I like my stadium experience, but I couldn't have been any happier with the seats we had. And really that double that we saw, or I kind of saw in the first inning from where I was putting the mustard and the ketchup on my hot dog, was really the only highlight that A's had of the day. I mean, Liriano got out of that inning without any trouble, not giving up any runs. And then in the bottom of the first, the Twins came out and put two on the board, took the lead. That was a good start to the game. I mean, starting pitching has been so bad. It's nice to get Liriano maybe a couple of runs to hopefully settle him down after uh, a scary first inning after that double. I mean... I was expecting after that double maybe it was going to really fall off for Liriano because he's kind of, I think he's on a short leash, although Garden Hire is really giving him a lot of chances and so has uh, pitching coach Rick Anderson. But in that first inning, it was Brian Dozier and Willingham who came through with RBIs. So that was a good start to the game. It was 2 nothing. And then in the second inning, Liriano comes out and he faces four batters and strikes out three of them. So that was a great rebound inning kind of for him, although he gave up a single. And also, this was the Twins' opportunity to get a home sweep over the Athletics after the night before, Willingham crushed a pitch in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs, a three-run walk-off home run to give the Twins a victory. And then in the fifth inning, Willingham went deep again to left field, pulled it right down the left field line, and once I saw it leave the bat, I knew it was gone. And from there, it was 4 nothing Twins, and Liriano pitched six innings. The thing that was wrong with Liriano was he gave a few walks, and the pitch count was getting up there close to 100. I'm not sure what he had when he left the game, but it was six scoreless, three-hit innings for Liriano. He had two walks, nine Ks, so I think this was a good rebound start for Liriano, although the athletics. I was looking at, I didn't really know anything about him, like I said before, but I was looking at the big Jumbotron in center field, I'm like, dude, Look at this team's averages, and I didn't realize it until I went to look at some stats before this commentary. They have the 30th batting average, 29th in runs, 30th in slugging, so yeah, their offense has been really bad, and the thing is, they're 22 and 30 right now, so I'm guessing their starting pitching is actually pretty good, but man, they are not scoring. If the Twins had some pitching, they have a decent lineup, I think. But the starting pitching has been so bad, it really takes the Twins out of their element. And they like to play small ball, they want to run the bases well, they want to do all the little things correctly. And they haven't really been able to do a lot of that because they've had big deficits they've had to overcome. But for the most part, this was a game that I would call a game of Twins baseball. I mean, they got six solid innings out of Liriano. In the first inning, they got two runs on the board. Just Willingham hit a single the other way and Dozier hit a single up the middle. And the Twins went on to win the game 4 to nothing. It was a little over two hour long game. It was kind of what I expected. I mean, the Twins only had about six hits and the A's had three hits. So it wasn't a, a ton of offense, but I was happy to see Willingham go yard. And really, he's my favorite player on the team. I didn't really have a favorite player coming into this season because I haven't watched him in a couple of years. But Willingham... They picked him up in free agency, and he started off this year really hot, and that's why he became my favorite player. I also like Ben Revere a lot because I just like watching him run. I used to be a big Carlos Gomez fan until I traded him for J.J. Hardy. But anyways, we saw a great game. It was a great day outside to be at the ballpark, 
and we never actually had to move from our seats. I mean, seats around us started to fill in, but nobody had our seats. So we just stayed there the whole time. We had so much room. We only had to stand up a couple times for people to get by. I was hoping I'd maybe get a foul ball or something, and the closest one was row one of our section. And we were pretty close to one of the t-shirts that TC was shooting out of the t-shirt bazooka, but... I'm still waiting for my first Major League Baseball. I've been to like 10 games or so, or a dozen games at two different ballparks, or three different ballparks actually, and I haven't gotten one yet, but I hopefully will one day. But I definitely want to go back to Target Field more this year. I've already been looking at their schedule to see what other teams they play. I like to get around to seeing some more different teams. When I used to go to the Dome, I would purposely go to games and buy tickets against like the Royals, and when Santana was pitching, because I knew they would probably win. But I just want to go back to that ballpark, man. It was amazing. Everything I heard was true about that stadium. It's a beautiful ballpark. There is so much room in the concourse. There probably isn't a bad seat in the place. And it was just so much fun to go and hang out with Nottis fan and watch the Twins get a victory. Oh, and also they had a little Twins trivia thing on the Jumbotron in center field. And they were asking a fan who uh, Ryan Domit would answer this question. It was like, who was his most exciting athlete to watch or his favorite exciting athlete to watch? And it was either Adrian Peterson Aaron Rodgers or Kobe Bryant and the guy I think he guessed Kobe Bryant and Domit came on that he's like Aaron Rodgers and I immediately started booing uh, I respect Aaron Rodgers but come on me and the rest of the target field were booing and it was actually the first game I'd ever been to where I didn't see a single fan of the opposing team there were no Oakland A's fans that I could see the entire time and not as fan realized that too but anyways guys that was my target field experience it was a great time I can't wait to go back but thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time